Hi, this is Julie with Bita Halik, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to make a strung necklace project. So we're going to be using some beading wire and stringing techniques along with some chain. And the focal of our necklace is going to be this really pretty Swarovski crystal fancy stone put into a setting and some little chatons in settings as well. So I'm going to quickly come back to what the supplies are that we're going to be using and all of them are available for sale at BitaHalik.com. But first I wanna show you just the variety of these fancy stones and their settings. So what's great is they have these beautiful stones and they are perfectly sized and matched shape-wise to fit into settings. And the settings all have two holes, so you have lots of options on how to use them. And you put them in and then you fold over these tabs. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do that in just a minute but just great pear shapes, wonderful rounds, rivolis, ovals, a whole host of different shapes, including like these cushion stones right here, which is a little bit of a squared off round shape, but it's just a really nice way of getting a very professional, very elegant look is by combining fancy stones and their settings. So let's go back to now the project that we're gonna be doing today in this video. It's going to be a complete project. So I've used a little bit of scrap beading wire that I had laying around to map out my design. So that's a quick little tip is if you have some extra beading wire, you can play with the design before you actually start your finished piece, start working on your finished piece. So this is what I've come up with. I've got these little Swarovski crystal rondelles. They're a six millimeter in crystal paradise shine. Tierra cast trapezoid beads. And then I've got these settings here that I'm going to set these SS39 chatons into. And if you look close, I'm going to take this big beautiful pair out of here. You see where the beading wire passes underneath the stones and through the holes. Now each of my settings do have two holes, but I'm choosing just to use their top holes. So you can use one or two. I'm going to be using an elegant elements clasp. It's this little box clasp. Nice little way that it slides together for a very secure fit. Some chain, this is silver plated chain and I have two feet right here. Some crimp beads, so these are actually crimp tubes. I've got the crimp bead cover so that they end up looking just like a little bead. And I've got some jump rings. I'm going to be using soft touch by soft flex beading wire in a medium weight. And that's it for my supplies. Now for my actual tools, I'm gonna to be using some bead stoppers, a popsicle stick to set my stones, a couple pairs of chain nose pliers, a crimping plier, and a cutter. So let's begin. The first thing I wanna do is slide this off and set my stones. So I'm going to take all of these front and center because I need to set them all. It doesn't take very long it's actually quite easy to do and you don't need any um, special like metal working tools, a just standard popsicle stick that you can pick up. You know, a lot of different places are save from your popsicle <laughs> or from your um, ice cream bar will work just fine. So we are going to take the setting and you see these upright prongs, put a chaton into it. And you just wanna make sure that it's sitting nicely in it and not off center. So this one went in a little crooked. I'm just going to drop it in. There we go. And now we're just going to take the end of our popsicle stick and press that tab over the crystal and it bends quite nicely. We're just going to work our way around. And we're just bending that tip over, tip of the, the prong. And now what I like to do is once I've got all of them in there, I like to go back and just take my popsicle stick and kind of roll it over a little bit. It's not gonna hurt the crystal. That's why we're using a wood stick and versus something that was metal that might scratch. But I just wanna make sure those prongs are really set for two reasons. One, I wanna make sure that my crystal doesn't fall out. And two, I don't want this to snag on my clothing. So there we go, we've got one set. We're gonna do all of them for this project. So for this particular strung necklace, we're gonna be using six of them of the little SS39 size. So 
Now, if you have any difficulty with your stone slipping at all, a good way to counter that is to set the prong on opposite sides uh, at the same time. So you set this one here, and then instead of going to the next one over, you go to the one across. But I really don't find these slip very much. I'm just pressing that down. That might be a better tip if you are using a bigger stone perhaps, but these small little ones stay, stay put pretty well. I've got my last little one to set. I wanted to show you one more quick tip for setting these. If your hands are a little bit shaky, a nice way, or if you just prefer this method, another way of setting these guys is to set it down on a flat, solid surface, and then push the tab over once it's sitting, sitting down. So there you go. Just like that. You're just pressing that tab over and you're rotating it on your work surface. My apologies if my hands are obscuring this at all. That's why I prefer the other method on camera, but this is a, a perfectly valid option, especially if maybe your hands are a little bit shaky and you want the table to work as a stabilizer for you. So they are all set now for the big pearl. We're gonna do the, I'm sorry, not the big pearl, the big pear. Now for the big pear. This is a little bit easier actually because you have more surface area to hold on to. Hold over those tabs. And this might be one that you do wanna work opposites. So there we go. You see how that's setting it. And the tabs are nice and discreet, so you're still seeing all that wonderful sparkle, but it is secure in there, which is really nice. So we have got all our stones set and we're ready to begin our stringing. So I'm gonna cut a length of beading wire. And because I laid out my little test piece, I know that I actually don't need that much beading wire. So maybe, oh, 12 inches, 13 inches, something like that is gonna be more than enough. The main length of my necklace is gonna come from the chain. And so you have two options at this point. You can go ahead and cut your chain right now to the lengths that you want and just attach the beading wire right onto it or you can start with a bead stopper. So I'm gonna start with a bead stopper. If you're not used to how these work, they're really great. They literally stop your beads from falling off. You squeeze them, you pinch them together. It becomes like an accordion fan and you just set your wire down in there. And now we're gonna string on a crimp bead. In this case, again, I'm using crimp tubes. And then we're gonna do a rondelle, a trapezoid bead with the point facing um, outward. Another rondelle, another trapezoid, another rondelle. And now we're ready for our first stone in its setting. And I'm gonna go through the top hole right here and come out the other side. And you wanna make sure it comes out the top hole on the other side. And if you look on the back, you can see it just a little bit behind that point. And it's just nice and under our stone. So now between these stones, I'm gonna put another crystal And again, I'm going through the top hole and top hole when the stone is facing me. Slide it down, another rondelle, another stone in its setting. And now another rondelle, our big, beautiful showstopper centerpiece. And again, just going through that top hole, you see it go through the back. So we've got half of our strung work done. We're just gonna make it a mirror image on the other side.
we have finished our pretty focal piece right here. And I'm just gonna put a bead stopper on the other side. So now I can pick this up. It's not gonna go anywhere, which is great. And we've got all of our beads strung. So now I wanna measure this. So this part here measures about five and a half inches. So you get to choose now how long you want your necklace to be. Your clasp is gonna add just about a half an inch, a little bit more than that. So you can consider this piece is maybe six inches, six and a half inches. So I wanna make this into an 18 inch necklace. So I am going, if this is six inches with my clasp, I need another 12 inches. So I actually have two feet of chain here, but it is going to be fine with just one foot. So here's the one foot. So six inches right here. I'm gonna cut. And then I can either measure another six inches or I could have just had used this as my measuring tool as well, made it equal length. If you wanted to make this necklace longer, just add extra length of chain. Okay, now we're gonna attach it to our chain. To do that, we're gonna remove a bead stopper from one end. And this is nice because these are nice closed links. They're fully soldered. We're just gonna attach it directly to the end chain link and come back down and around and through that crimp bead and the bead next to it, pull. So you've got like a nice little loop. Keep pulling, keep pulling. You want it to be able to move you don't want it too tight, especially with this chain, so I'm gonna leave the loop just like that. Now we're gonna crimp it. We have a pair of crimping pliers. It has two notches. You might be able to see better against my hand. One notch is shaped like a kidney bean that's back towards the handles, and the other is oval shaped. We're gonna start with the back notch, which is kidney bean shaped. We're gonna squeeze, and what that does is it helps to flatten our crimp bead and make it that same kidney shape. And now we're gonna go ahead and stand that upright in the front notch. And squeeze, and that folds it over onto itself. So that is a really nice secured crimp bead. And what I wanna do is I want to cover that crimp bead and make it look just like a regular bead so I am going to use a crimp bead cover. So this, in essence, is an open bead. It's got a nice opening and it's a good round shape. And we want that opening to face out away from our plier handles. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna slip it over our crimp bead and squeeze. And now it just looks like a bead. Okay, go to the other side. and I will trim this little tail here at the end. So here we've got this. Make sure it looks right. If you're happy with it, do the same thing on this side over here. So we went through that end chain link. I'm gonna go back down and around. Ah, my little crimp bead was getting away from me. Go back down through it and the next bead. And now we're gonna pull it but we don't want any gaps. So this is a pretty big gap right here. We wanna cinch that up. You can do that by just pulling your bead down. And I don't want this too tight. If this is too tight, it's not gonna drape and it's gonna to be too stiff. So you can even curve it a little bit to mimic what it's gonna do on your neck so that you make sure that it's not too tight. So that's about right for me. I have a little teeny gap right here, which I am totally okay with. And I wanna cinch up that hole just a, or that loop just a little bit. There we go. Okay, I like that. It's not gonna be stiff now. Also your crimp bead cover adds just a fraction of a millimeter to the um, width right here. And so it does behoove you to have a little bit of slack. So I'm gonna do the same thing to crimp this crimp bead. It's 
stand it upright. And now we're going to go in with another crimp bead cover. Slip it over it and squeeze. Now we are ready to trim our tails. We're just going to go where they're exiting. Snip. Snip. All we have left to do is attach our clasp. We're going to do that with jump rings. So to open and close a jump ring, you're going to want two pairs of chain nose pliers. And these are open jump rings. They have a little slit at the top. So you grab them on either side and you twist. We can link that onto our chain and then we can link that onto our clasp. And close it on up. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, and then we will be done with our necklace. And I'm using a four millimeter jump ring here. Okay, so you want to make sure it's nice and tight. And there we go, our necklace is complete. And so we've done some stringing, we've done some stone setting, and we've opened and closed some jump rings, and we've used a really pretty silver plated chain as well. I'm gonna put this on a bust real quick so you can see what it would look like against black, just because this is silver. So straighten up our chain link right there. So there we go, so we've got that pretty Swarovski crystal, the tear cast beads, a silver plated chain, and that pretty little button looking clasp in the back. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find all the supplies that you've seen here as well as the tools at beadaholic.com as well as hundreds of other beading videos showing you all different types of techniques. Thanks so much for watching.